Hi, and welcome to ESL, Activating Background Knowledge. If you'd like to follow along with this presentation, go to bit.ly forward slash activating BK. Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Kristen Adams. I am a staff development facilitator at the Carbon Lehigh Intermediate Unit. Today, we're going to be looking at activating prior background knowledge with English language learners. There are four things we're going to be looking at. The objectives, the methodology, exploration, and then finally spending some time in the application stage. As we get started, we want to cover a few things. Our first objective is to develop or deepen the ability to scaffold instruction through the understanding of how to activate background knowledge and then to develop two to three new techniques or techniques you haven't tried in a while to awaken students' background knowledge. When planning for any instruction with your L's, you need to consider a few things. What can my L's do? What might be challenging? And what supports will give L's access to the content that you're teaching? Starting with the methodology. Why should you spend time activating background knowledge? Brain research from Carnegie Mellon psychologists confirmed it's easier to learn something when we connect it to something that we already know. So making those connections helps students set the playing field for what they're about to learn. Prior knowledge activation is critical in the learning process and a major factor in reading comprehension. There are three ways to activate and strengthen your background knowledge. Activate and apply, explicitly build, and illuminate, not replace. When we activate and apply, there's four things you wanna keep in mind. First, dismiss your assumptions. All of us come with different experiences and background and have experienced life in a different way. So dismiss what you already know about the topic and start with what do my students know or what might trick them when they're learning. When it comes to our L's, there's two types of language that need to be addressed, academic language and content language. Those both need to be taught, which makes it a very heavy lift for our L students. So make sure that you're addressing both the academic language of the content, content that you're teaching and the specific content language. The third is to engage students. Look for ways that to ignite their curiosity when teaching and make sure that you're adjusting to the current needs in your classroom. So when you adjust your language, here's some things you want to consider. When you're going to be introducing a topic, let's say we're talking about amusement park. Think about the small adjustment to your language. When you look at a picture, instead of saying, you know when, the picture on the right hand side, you know when you ride a roller coaster, start with something more general. Have you ever been on a roller coaster? Or have you ever been to an amusement park? Starting with a broader open ended question allows for students who might not have done it, but might have heard or experienced it in some way make a connection. Remember, a picture is worth a thousand words. So Use that to your advantage when activating background knowledge. It helps to reinforce those concepts when you give them visual clues. So here's some examples. When you're explicitly building, take a look at the picture. You could start with something like this. Here is a way to introduce a unit on fishing, or some, maybe you're going to be addressing this somewhere in the this, in this story that has specific content language. Starting with a picture and image and then adding sentence stems helps the learners in your classroom feel confident about what they're going to learn. When they see the sentence starters, they have a basis to start the conversation. This reminds me of, it looks like, I know that, I think that, are a few sentence starters that can help engage your learners. There's ways then you can differentiate the content that's specific to what you're teaching. So if you're teaching about fishing, for example, there are certain language that is specific to fishing. If you're not a fisherman, you might not know these terms. So for your, your higher level ESOL students, using a quick write 
and having them pick one of the pictures, identify it, and write down what they know is a great way to start. Maybe your lower level students in your class in terms of their English language proficiency can draw a line and connect it. Maybe they could start with the ones they already know. They already know what a rod is. And now they can move on. They already know what a hook is. And now you're helping eliminate. Do you see how when I have four images on the screen, I also have four vocabulary words to the left. I'm not adding extra vocabulary or anything that's confusing. I'm helping build that background knowledge and activate and connect it for them and explicitly build on things they already know. I'm not spending a ton of time to introduce everything I've ever done or known about fishing because if we go back to the basis that we're trying to cover, we want to illuminate, not cover the whole thing. We want to still allow for that curiosity and learning. So here are some few, few ideas for building background knowledge. One of the ways you could start is through a think pair share, allowing time to think, to partner with somebody in the classroom and then share. You could have them share throughout the room by giving them each a number and having them work in numbered heads together, all the ones together, all the twos together. Maybe your different levels you can use to your advantage in terms of having one of their students be a reporter and ask the questions and then the interviewer, the person that they're interviewing, could answer the questions and add to their background knowledge. A gallery walk is another way, taking pictures or different vocabulary words or passages or anything that you're learning to get started and place it around your classroom where students can get up out of their seats and look at them and walk around. What tools should you use when you're trying to activate background knowledge? There are so many tools out there. From a KWL chart, to anticipation guides, to an ABC braining chart, to using multimedia to help students understand, or the gallery walk, which I talked about before. Feel free to click on any of the links to learn more. Here's a short video that will explain a little bit of how it's important to teach vocabulary, not only explicitly, but to help build that background knowledge for students. I had a student, um, like not last week, but the week before, very recently, I was pushing into a math class and there was a word problem. And he's one of my boys from China. He's been here since seventh grade. He's now in 10th or 11th grade. and. Um, he must be in 11th. This is my fifth year knowing him. So he's been in the country five years. And he came in knowing absolutely no English. Um, and we were in this math class, and this word problem was about bees, 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 bees. And he just looked at me, and he said, Miss, what is a bee? So, And it's so funny because I knew that that was going to be something that he didn't know. But his math teacher was a mainstream teacher. You know, She was a leave replacement, actually, and had no exposure really to working with L's. And I just said, you know, Miss so and so, can we please just show a picture, just some sort of, uh, you know, visual representation of what a bee is? And it just, you could see the light bulb in her head, and she, and we put it up, and he's like, oh, and then he went back into the problem and got it right. So it's just that, you know, trying to know your students, knowing what they'll know, and then moving them forward a little bit. So as you can see, that teacher could have started with an example of what a bee is. We don't want to illuminate too much of what is happening, but activating is actually taking small little things that potentially could trip up our students and giving them an opportunity to have success by front loading it and teaching them a little bit about the vocabulary and activating their curiosity. When we activate and extend, there are many different activities online that we can use as well. Whether you're using Edpuzzle, an answer garden or a word cloud, virtual maps or field trips, those are all excellent ways to help students make those connections. When it comes to teaching, we must leverage and activate our background knowledge. Because if not, we're not creating equitable access for all students. And that is the job of all teachers, that we must make sure that our con content is comprehensible, that they're able to access the information they know and make sense of it. 10 to 15 times is the amount of time a reader will need exposure to learn a new word. There is a lot out there and a lot to cover. 
but make sure when you're planning, you start to think about how are you activating your background knowledge? Are you allowing for students to engage in a meaningful way by teaching them academic language and content language? So today our goal was to show you how to scaffold the instruction through activating background knowledge and give you some new strategies. Now, as we go into the application of building background, we want you to spend a few minutes doing this. So at the end of this video, you can stop the video and we want you to do the following. Pick a lesson you're about to teach. Think about the L's in your classroom. What background knowledge must you include? How will you activate their background knowledge? What key academic language might be confusing? Take one of the tools you learned today and incorporate it into your lesson. Share your ideas with a partner. If time allows, share your ideas with your team or your group. Start to spend some time thinking about how you're planning your lessons, how you're engaging students in, the back, in their background knowledge and activating it, and making the curriculum that you're teaching comprehensible to all students. Thank you for learning with us today. If you would like to learn more about any of our ESOL topics, feel free to follow me on the YouTube channel. Thank you.